Yeah, so we're gonna move, we're gonna move the animals. Basically, we're gonna move them into the next pasture. So, uh, so you're gonna end up, you gotta just step in the shit. You gotta get into it. Yeah. Your boy was trying to save you, but. <laughs> I'm Dan Colon, I'm an artist, I'm from New Jersey, grew up across the George Washington Bridge, grew up skating in the city. By the time I got to be around 19 or 20, I met Iraq, and you know, I spent those years with this very kind of close-knit group of people, with Kunle and Dash No and Ryan McGinley. You know, we were incredibly fortunate, you know, and I've been all over the world. Represented by Gagosian Gallery, um, I show with Levi Gorvi, and in Italy I show with Massimo Di Carlo Gallery. You know, and I always felt so connected to New York City, but like at a certain point, you know, and it was basically when I turned 30, I realized to be in the center of it all the time just like wasn't healthy for me anymore. A lot of things happened also, you know, a lot of people, a lot of my close friends died. I needed to, to grow, I needed to like leave. <sighs> yes, yeah, these little sheep escaped actually. Yeah, definitely we're gonna, we'll do this. We'll move these guys, it's pretty fun. You know, they'll all kind of start running following us. When I first moved here, it wasn't a farm. And this whole pasture was like those little weeds that you saw with all the thorns on them, but like huge, you know, the size of these smaller trees. It was really the first time in my life that like I ever had more than I needed. You know, I started learning about these, these communities that had zero access to any fresh food. And it kind of like stirred something in me. So what we're doing is trying to bring, you know, good, nutritious food to places that it has been withheld from, you know? And this is part of like a much bigger dialogue around, you know, systemic racism, systemic injustice. All of our food goes into communities with little to no access to fresh food. Look at this guy right here. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta. This is Joy. Joy was the first, the first animal we got. We have like multiple species here. You can see over there the cows, the sheep. They have different parasites that don't affect each other, so that's a good thing. So we're trying to stack these systems so that they um, kind of take care of each other. The kind of like health of the farm depends on the diversity. The animals make the pastures healthier. You know, the bees pollinate the pastures. We use the animal manure to fertilize the gardens. And we use the garden waste to feed the animals. And it's just this kind of very beautiful closed circuit. When you start to smell bananas, that's mm -hmm. when they're getting agitated, the pheromone that they release when there's like a intruder. Uh, it smells like bananas. Uh -oh. Organic produce and pasture-raised livestock is only accessible to like a privileged few, you know? For the last nine seasons, this has been um, really just like my own personal mission and um, it's all self-funded. What I realize on, on this land is that like, it has to be bigger than Sky High Farm. It has to be bigger than me. It has to be bigger than the team I work with here. What's up, my man? How you doing? Good, good, good to drive? see you. It was cool. Yeah. It was cool, early morning. Yeah. 
someone from your side to come in and, and like work with me. It's, it's really tremendous, you know, and then also under Dover Street Market. Post the Supreme work, you know, what I understood was like, how can we create this new idea of philanthropy, right? Because for me, my idea of philanthropy was like, you know, you make a billion and then you give away like a million, right? But I'm like, when the fuck am I ever going to make a billion dollars, you know? like. We can start small. I know that we share like so much inspiration and background and a lot of the same kind of things have kind of propelled us forward, same generation. And as I'm doing this, I just realized more and more just like kind of how powerful of a platform fashion is, our clothing and streetwear in particular. I've said this a lot of times, like the era of the cool guy is dead. You know what I mean? Like the era of the big ego is dead. When you propose this idea of you want to start bringing food down to the city, I was like, all right, boom, let's, let's bring it to Queens. So you want to unpack them at 12, you said? Yeah, just right. that way they stay. Yeah. So if I want to preserve the city, what, what am I doing? Am I going to sit home and bitch and moan like how like everything's whack? Or am I going to go out there and actually be a part of my community? This is masks for, uh, from, uh, from a friend of ours. Doors are opening up for us and, it, and it's really on us like, to take the lead. So many times, I've seen something I've wanted to address. I've seen something that inspired me to take an action that I don't take an action because I don't feel like I know enough about it. You know, I don't feel like I have the experience that's necessary to tackle the problem. And you know, I think it's important to kind of get an education and connect with people who know what they're doing, but it's also important just to like take an action, you know, do something. And you know, that's really like what my creative practice is built on. And you know, I think that's what the farm has come out of. I don't really know how to explain it exactly, but like, you know, I could say this. Um, in a way, I see this as the most creative thing I've done in the last 10 years.